Hello there, my name is Rachel Musson and I'm Director of Thoughtbox Education. As we've launched our new curriculum on equality and justice, I wanted to take this opportunity to offer a short training video to support any of you educators out there who have um, concerns, questions, or um, and, and maybe a mild nervousness about bringing these conversations into the classroom to help you to navigate what is quite a complex topic, uh, but also hopefully feel empowered in bringing these conversations into your classroom. Um, as a starter, um, I want to just flag up some of the concerns you may um, already be having. For example, thoughts like, uh, what if these conversations become too personal? Um, what if I find these conversations uncomfortable? What if there are extreme views that come up in the classroom? Um, how can I create a safe space for the students? What if I don't know the answers? Now, these are really valid questions that you may be asking yourself, and they're very important to recognise um, as part of the process of what this the curriculum is going to be exploring. To begin with, it's important to recognise that as teachers, when we're exploring big issues in the classroom, we're not doing it from a place of knowledge, we're doing it from a place of exploration. And so one of the, 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 the main points I really want to share with you um, in this short video is the importance of recognising that we are there as educators to welcome the questions, not to impart the answers. And I think having that difference of a framework of what these lessons are doing really helps to allow you as a teacher to not feel a responsibility of having to know um, the, the answer to the, um, to, to the social and ecological justice um, issues that we're having in our, in our society. So, so start with that as a, as a framework. But I just want to spend um, 10 minutes or so talking with you about uh, why we should be talking about equality and justice in the classroom, how we can welcome these quite tricky conversations into the classroom and what the curriculum uh, looks like, just to give you a little bit of an inside, um, inside view. So to begin with the question, why should we talk about this in the classroom? Well, from a very basic level, race, privilege, discrimination, biases, these are part of our lives. These are happening in our, in our daily lives and we are all living in these processes, whether consciously or not. And so what we're bringing into these discussions is, is life learning. Um, secondly, children are asking for these lessons. Um, we can see through Black Lives Matter movements, through Fridays for the Future movements, through Decolonize the Curriculum, through Teach the Future. There are students across the world who are welcoming the chance to talk about and learn about and feel empowered about some of the biggest issues of their time. And social and ecological justice are two of the most prominent issues happening all around the world. And it is from young people themselves that we're hearing this call for a space, a safe space to talk about these issues, to understand a little bit of the complexities and to have a place to share their thoughts, their feelings and to and understand and explore together. So the second reason really is that young people are asking for these spaces. And thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, from a teaching point of view, as educators, we have a moral responsibility to educate the young people we work with for the world that they're growing in. And it might feel terrifically inconvenient. It might feel um, uncomfortable to be educating or exploring some of these bigger issues um, in the classroom where there aren't right answers and there aren't easy fixes. And yet to not welcome them into the classroom is actually doing a huge disservice because these conversations are happening, whether they, whether we like it or not. These issues are live in all of the young people and, our, and ourselves as, as, as adults in the world, and they're not going anywhere. And so there is a responsibility we have to welcome these into the classroom. So how can we do that? How can we invite what feel like quite tricky conversations into the classroom? First, um, I, would, I would recommend that you acknowledge, both personally and in the classroom space, the discomfort. These conversations, uh, when we're talking about big issues, are not simple and they're not easy. They're, they're tricky, they're prickly, they're uncomfortable. 
and we are going to be exploring and, and igniting tricky feelings, tricky reflections that will make you as a teacher and perhaps some of your students feel uncomfortable. Now, to shy away from that, I can understand and appreciate why we might wish to do that. But actually, part of this work is to welcome bravery into the classroom. And that starts with us as an educator, putting ourselves into places of humility and also acknowledging the fact that we do feel uncomfortable, perhaps recognising um, some of the privilege that we may have, recognising some of the dis uh, discriminations that exist perhaps in our in our own lives, in our, in our pedagogies, recognising the diversities in our classroom that we're working with. So start with acknowledging the prickly part of these conversations and the discomfort. Then let's welcome and, and recognise the learning process. We um, as educators are always learning as much as the children that we're working with are learning. And this sort of learning is a continual process. We are not here as teachers to teach equality and justice. We're here to welcome the questions and explore ideas together. Within that, we can really welcome a space of collective learning. Um, and I'll talk to you in a second about how we as a teacher can become active learners in these discussions. Firstly, thinking about our role as a teacher is, is to um, encourage um, young people to feel that they can share together without discrimination, without feeling that there is an autonomy of knowledge. Uh, we don't have the answers, as I said, to this, this very systemic um, um, issue that we're going to be exploring, but we can welcome the questions and those can be our own questions as well as the questions from the children. So thinking about how to welcome the learning space, start with the idea of all of us being active and participatory learners. We come into these conversations with a learner's mind, which means we don't, as a teacher, walk into that classroom to teach the answers. We walk into that classroom to explore and learn together with the young people that we're working with. And that really changes the dynamic of our role as an educator. Within that, let's think about the, um, the active process that we can welcome. We can really welcome listening. Now, listening isn't hearing. Listening is actually um, allowing different thoughts, different ideas, different responses to go into us as, as teachers and, as, and to children as well. And to um, recognise that there may be things that come up in that classroom that make us feel uncomfortable, that are very different views from the ones that we hold. But we can honour each individual by listening. We can um, open the space for learning, for reflection, and for a, for a practice that's, that's called unlearning, which is simply allowing ourselves um, as educators, as well as the children we work with, to almost um, update any ideas that, that come up. We may have learnt in our past certain ways of thinking or seeing the world that some of these discussions will question uh, and make us reflect on that will require us to perhaps unlearn and relearn in retrospect. And that's a really strong um, a, a gift or, or process that we can show and model to children, that it's okay to change your mind, that it's okay to shift the opinion that you had into a different way of seeing things. And actually it's a huge sign of wisdom to be able to say, you know what, I, I didn't get that right, or I, I learned that in a different way. And I actually really want to think about that in a different way now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my, my thoughts and feelings on that. So modeling that behavior is quite empowering for young people to see the, the welcomeness that comes in, in an unlearning space. And, and just on that, that same space, modeling behavior is really, really welcome in these spaces, modeling active listening, modeling empathy, modeling this, this compassionate space for the different ideas coming up in the classroom. And thirdly, in this how to, how to bring these tricky conversations into the classroom, Let's welcome safe spaces and brave spaces. Now, in the, the uh, teacher pack and the parent pack that comes with this program, we've got some very specific ideas of how you can create safe spaces and how to um, bring brave spaces into the classroom. But just in, in, brief, in brief, when we're creating a safe space, we really want to welcome a place where children um, feel welcomed um, and have that capacity to open up their thoughts and their feelings. So we need to set clear boundaries of what these discussions look like. Like, and you as a, an educator in a school may already have boundaries when you're talking um, about big issues in the classroom. If not, co-create them together as a class and we give some guidance of how to do that. You might want to create a class charter to start off any of these discussions. 
As a teacher, monitor the well-being of the children all the way through the class. You can have simple strategies of, you know, holding up a different colour or hand to sort of show how they're feeling at different times in the, in the lesson. Um, Recognising that you don't need to fix the feelings that come up. You, you just need to welcome them into those spaces and acknowledge that people will be feeling different things at different times. Um, really important in creating safe spaces is to actually think about the physical structure of the room. And one of the things we really welcome in all of the Thought Box lessons is for you as a teacher to sit rather than stand. Now I recognise in terms of uh, classroom management and in terms of classroom structures that may for some feel very uncomfortable but one of the other alternatives you can do is to create a circular dynamic in the class so that everybody can see everybody else in that space and that you're creating a physical um, dynamic of a learning, um, a learning model where you're learning together rather than sitting in rows and facing you. If you have children sitting staring at you, you suddenly become the centrepiece piece of these discussions whereas if everybody's sitting in a circle and facing each other you lose that responsibility for for holding the the, the ideas the knowledge and every young person in that classroom becomes uh, an autonomous figure in the learning space so, so so do think about the the physical structure of the classroom and again there's ideas in the training pack in the teacher pack on that welcome the uh the brave spaces so create the safe spaces but in that welcome the brave spaces now the brave spaces are where thoughts and feelings are allowed to enter now for many teachers that feels perhaps a very uncomfortable space because you don't know what's coming but if you're setting up a safe space to begin with you also set up the fact that everybody's thoughts are welcome everybody's feelings are welcome and they're valid and they're heard and we can really practice that that collective empathy and compassion by welcoming those thoughts and feelings welcome the discomfort we've mentioned this already including your own and don't feel afraid to say to young people, you know, this is actually making me feel very uncomfortable because what you're modelling there is a very human reaction to discomfort. And again, part of our role as educators is to model some of the learning practices that help children to grow into emotionally um, uh, honest and resilient and flourishing young adults. So think about modelling your own behaviours and really take risks with welcoming empathy and compassion into the heart of this learning. A lot of the work we're trying to really support with Thoughtbox is to connect first on our human level. Now, with these tricky issues, especially when we're looking at um, social justice, um, we tend to have um, a, a kind of nervousness about labels. Um, we're looking a lot in this, in this um, curriculum at discrimination levels. But what we're trying to really welcome in these learning spaces is the opportunity to go beyond the othering into the empathy space and meet first in our shared connections. We all share thoughts and feelings, we all share vulnerabilities, we all share uncertainties, we all share frustrations. So meet in those spaces rather than meeting in these labelled spaces um, and that allows us to start from a real space of empathy and compassion. And one of the, the tips I learned from my old teacher when I was at school, um, when you're looking at issues where some people might raise something that feels quite controversial, quite tricky, that really needs unpacking, is to physically take the idea out of the child and to hold the idea up for scrutiny. So say someone in your class has said something that's perhaps a little controversial, it's a little offensive, it, it might something something that feels quite shocking. Rather than suddenly condone that child and put all attention onto that child, literally physically with your hand, pull in the air the idea out and say, you know, what you've just said there actually is a really interesting idea that I think we need to look at in more detail. And then physically point to the idea, which is away from the child, hold the idea up and allow the class to start thinking or dissecting or critiquing the idea. And what you do there is you allow that child to let that idea go, to let that bias or that discrimination go and to look at it externally and to then change their mind if they want to unlearn and relearn, and also to not hold on to the responsibility of having that view and not to have the entire class looking at them and giving a responsibility for that view. So it's a really clever little trick that works really well when you've got diverse ideas shared in the classroom. And finally, let's think about what this program looks like. And again, you may or may not have had a chance to look through some of the lessons. So a quick summary of what the Thought Box Inquiry curriculum looks like. 
In brief, as I said before, this is a space to explore together. It's not a didactic, didactic curriculum. We do look at some of the histories of inequality in our societies, and we look at some factual ideas from different um, practitioners. But a lot of the learning is about exploring together, welcoming questions and exploring ideas and learning from each other as much as learning in the, in the um, lesson plan space. We take students through a process, a four lesson process. Um, so each, each unit for each year group has got four lessons going through a process of immersion into the topic, of understanding and reflecting more deeply, of exploring a wide range of perspectives and of feeling empowered. And so we, we take children through this journey so that they can come out the other side of this, of this learning into a space of empowerment and engagement rather than a space of overwhelm and, um, and anxiety. And finally, to think about uh, the what of this learning, recognise the fact that these discussions don't just end when the bell rings. They also won't end neatly. Um, and so part of the learning is to see and, and appreciate the fact that this is um, life learning and life learning happens um, all the way across across the day. Um, so you can welcome parents into these conversations. We have a parent pack that you can send home, um, invite children to take some of these questions and thoughts back into the learning space at home. Have ways in the in the wider school environment of continuing the conversations. You may have a, a, a wonder wall in the corridors with a place for children to write their big questions questions on you know I wonder why and we can share ideas of wonder walls again in our in our resource pack you may have thoughts and worries box in the classroom for any concerns that come out at the end of these discussions that children want to share anonymously obviously have those open spaces where children can go to keep the conversations going and we also have a huge resource pack both for teachers and for children on much wider reading learning and um, resources that they can go and continue their own learning journeys after the uh, curriculum finishes in the classroom. So I hope this is a supportive introduction to um, what this curriculum is offering. Um, please do feel free to get in touch if you have particular questions. And we're going to be opening up our community forum on the Thoughtbox website at several occasions in the new year to host um, live conversations and Q and A's with teachers who are bringing this curriculum into their classrooms to share different practices and ideas for talking about big issues. So good luck and I hope you enjoy the curriculum and, and I hope the children find a lot of inspiration from some of these ideas.